Richard Marcus is every casino's worst nightmare. I really took over these casinos. I controlled their personnel like puppets on a string. I made them do what I wanted. I just blew through there like a storm. Uh, even though he's a cheater and I'm a casino person and I'm supposed to, to you know, dislike all cheaters, I have, some res I have a lot of respect for Richard Marcus. As far as cheating goes, Richard Marcus should be the king. I was put on this planet to beat these casinos. End of story. Over the past three decades, Marcus has scammed millions of dollars from the world's leading casinos. Unlike punters, the scammer knows he can't rely on luck. To be a successful casino cheater, uh, first and foremost, you have to have balls. A good smile from time to time helps, because you, uh, you want these casino people, when, they're, when you're robbing them, or I shouldn't say robbing, when you're cheating them and uh, swindling money out of these casino people, you want them to like you while you're doing it. Hmm. Marcus began not robbing the casinos in 1976 while working as a croupier in Vegas. He was seduced into the glamorous world of casino crime by a notorious scammer, Joe Klassen, who began young Marcus's apprenticeship with one of the most significant moves in scamming history. Once I was on board with Joe and his team, they taught me basic pass posting. Pass posting is a term that refers to putting a bet down uh, on a winning number, on a winning decision after the decision has been made. It's actually a racehorse term. It comes from um, the practice of betting on a horse once it's past the post. What makes a great pass posting team is if it's well run like a military operation, you have to have uh, someone who's in charge. There was no question of the trust between us. Klassen taught Marcus everything he knew, and pass posting allowed their dream team to get away with cheating the casinos over a 20-year period. But the dream couldn't last forever. Our first team uh, with Joe had ended. Joe had retired, and I needed people. Now I wanted to start my own team. Richard and I met in the spring of 1994, and he always told me that we'd be a good team in the casino business. I always been around gambling, doing scams, doing cons, and making money gambling, finding the best possible way to cheat in any game there is in the world and perfect it. Within weeks, Marcus's new team was pulling in up to $100,000 every weekend. But stripping the casinos of their profits began to attract some unwanted attention. There's no question that in the late 80s and early 90s, all of Las Vegas had to revamp their surveillance uh, systems because of yours truly. They knew I was beating the hell out of them and we were just killing them. Before, they had like one camera that would rotate between three or four tables. So when we went in there and did a move, the chances that that camera would have the split second move were virtually zero. Marcus's team was so successful, the casinos were forced to introduce surveillance on every table and the past posting party came to an end. Probably the strongest tool in the past post is the, is the surveillance cameras. And the reason why is they capture what has happened on the table. Uh, past posting occurs and all of a sudden you go, wow, I think something happened here. It need to roll back the videotape and be able to watch it. With cameras watching their every move, Marcus realized that to continue scamming the casinos, he had to come up with a big idea. His solution was pure genius. He turned the constant surveillance to his advantage. A simple reversal of the past posting move made Marcus a Las Vegas legend. It's so good that anyone could go out and do it right now. It's, it's indefensible. Richard's move was brilliant in the light that he put the big bet out in advance and disguised it or hid it from the dealer's view. I found the perfect angle, how to place the chips, and by, by uh, jutting out a red chips, just by angling it off the, the distance of a fingernail, that hid the $5,000 chip underneath. And once we knew that, we had the basic makings of that move. The key to the new move was disguise plus sleight of hand. The high chip was always on the table, but only revealed if the bet was won. Marcus named his new move the Savannah after his favorite Vegas stripper. 
The first time I got paid with Savannah, it was an orgasm. It was better than sex. It was the biggest high of all time. What we did is when we hid the $5,000 chip underneath and the dealer spun the ball, the dealer thinks there's $15 or $20 there. Now the ball's spinning and boom, it lands on our winning bet. It's either an even money bet or a two to one bet. I start screaming, I won $5,000, I won $5,000 on the first column or on the 19 to 36 bet. Now the dealer has no idea what I'm talking about because the dealer never saw the $5,000 chip underneath there. It's hidden. If the bet wins, you would call upstairs to say, was the bet there? And of course it was. It was there right from the beginning. With the bet confirmed by the camera, the casino had to pay out. But the real skill in pulling off the Savannah came when a bet was lost and the high-value chip had to be removed from the table before the croupier could rake it in. The actual cheating move only happens when that bet loses. And when that bet loses, I just go out and I rake it right off. And when the dealer called me raking off the chips and said, Hey, sir, put that down. But what I put down was not the $5,010 I had out there, but the $15 that was in my other hand, the three red chips. But since the dealer never saw the $5,000 chip and thought that the bet was $15, he is satisfied that I put back what was originally there. Over the next four months, Marcus and his team scammed an estimated $2 million using the Savannah. Savannah is my favorite cheating move in the world because it's just, uh, just so much money to be made and so simple and very low risk of going to jail. We would, on Friday to Sunday, make an average of fifty to sixty thousand dollars. Probably the most we made in one night in the one casino, maybe a hundred twenty thousand. Although the casinos knew they were losing money, they were baffled. The only way we could combat Richard Marcus, to be honest with you, is just refuse to pay, because he was getting away with it so successfully that we really didn't know how to stop it at the time. So Marcus went global and worked the Savannah at casinos all over the world for the next five years. By the year 2000, he'd made enough money to retire from the scamming game forever. I finally decided to give it all up, uh, the Savannah and cheating. Uh, I'd made enough money. I was getting tired, the traveling, and uh, I really wanted to write a book about it. At the time, the Savannah move came about, I had never seen anything close to it. Richard Marcus is probably one of the best cheats I've ever encountered. I would say I'm the best cheater of all time that is known to casinos, and I'm also the only major cheater that has never been arrested or charged with any gambling crime. Richard Marcus's simple but elegant Savannah is without doubt one of the most infamous scams in gambling history. It earned him more than $12 million, the equivalent of almost £7 million, and allowed him to retire from scamming very rich and very smug. Coming up, Australia's most infamous racing scandal. It was a balls up from day one. Plus a man who swindled millions from slot machines. Nick Rash is just a career criminal. You know, if you shake his hand, you better count your fingers afterwards. And the gangster-backed racing scam that saw a fortune go to the dogs.